this month actually marks one year that I have been doing video reviews, so I actually wanted to do something just a little bit different and announce my first theme month. So the theme for May will be Marine Madness, which is basically just any sort of a sea creature, sea monster type film, which will be reviewed during the month of May. So first off for May, I wanted to take a look at Orca, also known as Orca the Killer Whale, which is a 1977 release by Paramount Pictures. The film was directed by Michael Anderson. In the starring role, we have Richard Harris, who plays Captain Nolan. He's somewhat of a fisherman or poacher. He catches animals for a local aquarium in order to pay off the mortgage on his boat so that he can move back to Ireland. Nolan himself is definitely beyond the triple threat. He is an actor singer, songwriter, director, producer. He is best known for his role in King Arthur in the musical Camelot. He was also the original Dumbledore in the first two Harry Potter films. He was actually very hesitant to take the role because it's not something that he wanted to be known for. He later changed his mind when his 10-year-old granddaughter threatened never to speak to him unless he played Dumbledore, so the willfulness of a child. Bo Derek does have a minor role as Annie. This is noted as being her screen debut. She of course did not gain notoriety until 10. Another minor character that we do have is Will Sampson who may better be known for his role in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. He was also in Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. The film itself does open up with Captain Nolan trying to catch a great white shark for the local aquarium. The shark he was in pursuit of happens to be killed. He refixates on the whale as he feels the animal would fetch a larger price. During a failed attempt to capture the male, he accidentally harpoons and injures a female orca. The female, for some reason, goes under the boat and tries to kill herself with the propeller. She is hoisted onto the ship, sort of just dangling as somehow the machinery malfunctions so they cannot let her down. She is in the process of dying and while she is suspended above the ship it does miscarry so the mate happens to witness this and gives some some sort of a, a scream of agony or despair it is established very early in the film that orcas are mammals they're not much different than humans their brain capacity is much larger than us so they can actually communicate just as well if not more than ourselves they also have an amazing memory and they are monogamous creatures so they do mate for life so having lost his mate he becomes very vengeful the the film itself actually mildly does focus on the miscarriage. We do see the fetus drop out of the orca. What adds to the shock value is earlier in the film it was also discussed that the fetus of an orca is very similar to the fetus of a human as far as the early developmental stages. Also they do actually have five fingers same as a human child would. This does make sense if you consider the development of the fin. Obviously they do have the phalanges within the fin, so in the early development stages it would make sense that it would resemble fingers. They also do have sort of a pinkish hue to them, so it literally does look like or resemble a human that has been miscarried so it does somewhat add to the shock value of the film it also does I suppose add to the humanity or the sorrow of the moment it is a very melodramatic scene but a lot of has been put into the film to establish these creatures as human the filmmakers obviously wanted you to empathize with these creatures and obviously understand where they're coming from emotionally that way when the remainder of the film does proceed, we do understand why the orca's actions are justifiable. So the male orca obviously does become vengeful. He rams the boat, tries to sink it. He at one point does snatch one of the crew members off of the boat and kills him. Eventually they do cut the female orca loose. He does try to wake her. Obviously she's dead by this point and the male orca pushes her ashore. From then on it's very difficult going for the characters in the film as well as the villagers as it is a sea town they do rely on fish in order to survive it is part of their 
economy. Having the orca around, it's driving the fish out of the area. They cannot uh, survive as well and they are urging Nolan to leave since they do realize he is at fault. Eventually at one point, Annie, who was injured during the boat ordeal, does stay over at Nolan's home. She is recovering. She does have a full cast on one of her legs. The orca does return to Nolan's home and it basically rams the home. It's sort of a house on stilts, cliffside type home. It does does manage to knock the home off balance. It's gradually falling into the sea and Annie, who is played by Bo Derek, is struggling to get to safety. In this moment, the orca does jump up. It bites the defunct leg, so now she's basically just some deformed woman. But this was the orca's way of retaliating. It saw a woman in Nolan's home. It probably assumed that she was his woman since the orca lost its mate, it's only fair that it would injure somebody associated with Nolan. Eventually, Nolan does go out to battle the beast. It is somewhat of a Moby Dick type scene, sailor battling the ferocious whale, but as I've said, it's, it's a vengeful and grief-stricken whale. They've taken a lot of pains to personify the creature so that the audience can identify with it. Eventually, the whale does lead them into colder regions. This scene itself sort of reminds me of Frankenstein, the ending scene from the book where they're basically in colder regions. The beast does return to kill Frankenstein, his creator. In this sense, I do see it as very similar because the orca was obviously a very peaceful creature. He's obviously been created by Nolan. He has become a monster due to Nolan's carelessness and stupidity. So it's very fitting that the story would draw illusion in this manner to drawing Nolan out to this cold, isolated region. It eventually does take care of Nolan in a typical orca fashion along the lines of a, a David Attenborough Trials of Life feature in which orcas do toy with seals before they do eat them. So it sort of manipulates Nolan mentally before actually doing away with him in a very traditional whale-like manner, which could be considered very severe by human standards or very cruel, but this is a creature that is obviously very large, it cannot come on land, and obviously he is very angry. So. I definitely do understand where the orc is coming from. I definitely do feel sorry for everything he's been through. The film originally was not very well received as most people do regard it as a Jaws ripoff. I honestly don't see it that way. I think the film takes a completely different direction. I honestly, aside from the fact that it's a sea creature, I see no similarities whatsoever. So the film did have this difficulty as Jaws was released two years prior to this film, which in my opinion is a very severe judgment because two years later and the film was basically just being bashed as a ripoff. It eventually did gain a cult following with people who have an interest with the eco-horror or natural horror genre. It's definitely very interesting, it's a very humane take on a creature, but all in all I think it's a great film. I would definitely recommend it to anybody who does love natural or eco-horror type genre films, but that is all I have for you today and we will be taking a look at more eco-genre films throughout the month. I will talk to you later.